or resets, as we call them, resetting the disc. Um, is it, can everyone hear me all right? Everyone see where, what I'm doing? All right. So the first thing to think about is I know we all like gaining yards. We all like heading towards the end zone. But part of the reason why, all right, I guess, why don't you guys tell me some of the reasons why a dump is important? Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. Yes. Okay. What other? What are some other reasons? Changes the angles you're attacking from. Changes the angles you're attacking from. Does it maybe create more space for you to work with as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, those are the three things really. And in this vertical offense that we are teaching you right now, particularly because this is we're going to focus on the resets for vertical. You are, like we said yesterday, you're trying to attack either the fourth side of the vert stack or the break side of the vert stack, right? And so it's really important that when you run out of options, say on the fourth side, you have a plan to move the disc over to that side so then you can attack the break side, right? It looks very much like an X. You're kind of attacking the fourth side and then you run out of space there, so you swing it to the break side and you're looking there and then you swing it to the fourth side and you're looking there and you're working your way down the field like that, right? It's very rhythmic kind of working your way back and forth down the field. So in order to be able to do that, we want to have a reset plan that is either putting me in much better position to go catch the disc, looking upfield in what we call power position, looking for that deep shot, maybe pump faking and hitting an under, or a reset that, say Rowan guards that really hard, a reset that sets me up to go swing it really easily all that space to throw onto. So I'm going to walk you guys through something. We call it the railroad tracks. There are um, some really fun analogies I've heard of like the railroad tracks of love where Seth and I are in a relationship. So I'm, I'm going to kind of use some of that analogy. I won't get too corny with it. I've heard people get very, very corny with it. But um, Russell, it's a three-way, right? <laughs> So, the most important part of this reset is the first part, and that is that I need Seth to commit to our relationship, right? So we're in a relationship here, you know, and actually, sorry, I probably brought this a little too close. I'm, I'm going to be a little more like this. Now, the first thing is, before he's even going to commit, he needs me to be positive, right? He needs me to be a positive partner so that he's willing to commit. So by positive, we mean I'm upfield of him, right? I'm not <laughs> negative, I'm not hanging out back here, nagging him all the time, you know, really annoying. I'm upfield, I'm positive, I'm cheery, and he wants to be my partner for anything. So I'm positive, and that means, the reason I'm positive is because even if Rowan poaches off me to that four side space, Seth can just put it out to this space, and he doesn't have to worry about throwing me way into the backfield, right? If I start out back here and Rowan poaches, then Seth's first look is to put me back here. We'd really prefer that Seth is leading me out here if Rowan poaches. So I'm positive to start. I'm so positive that Seth is really confident in me. He looks at all his other options, and when he's on the sideline, he only looks at a few of them, and he, he sees this just bright ray of sunshine and decides to commit to me. So when I say commit to me, I mean Seth, like you're seeing, he's turning his hips and facing up with me. Just eye contact is not nearly enough for me to fall in love, right? So I need Seth to turn to me, give me his whole body, show me what he's got, and now we're locked into this relationship, right? So that's a very important thing. It's not just looking at your dump, it's turning and checking in. And what that does is that engages our relationship. So now we need a relationship that is gonna be very clear. I need Seth to know where we're going, you know, what's our track towards marriage and beautiful children and retirement. So I only operate on what we call the railroad tracks of love. These are the railroad tracks of love, right? If I'm sometimes going here and sometimes going over here and maybe sometimes I run really close to Seth, it's really hard for him to know what to expect. We get into all sorts of conflicts. You know, it's confusing for our kids. We end up, uh, you know, not working out as a couple. So I am very consistent in our relationship. I am the rock of our relationship. And I have this railroad track of love to operate on. So I'm positive, I'm waiting for Seth to commit, and then I'm engaging my cut. Generally, I'm gonna threaten upfield. If Rowan's giving me the upfield, and 
I can just go get it. That's a great position to catch it in. I'm a very comfortable thrower in that position. I have all my awesome teammates to throw to. The reason we want this railroad track though, is if Rowan plays really tight defense there, you'll notice a lot of times he plays tight defense, I've gotten close to the thrower, and then we just kind of come to here. This is not only a much worse position for me to catch it in, because as Rowan comes back with me, he has a play, so I get the disc, he has a play on this swing, right? I don't have nearly as much space to throw to. That's also a harder throw for Seth, right? He has a narrower window between Rowan and me. It's a really short space. It's kind of an uncomfortable forehand a lot of the time. So I want to stay on my railroad tracks. Even if Rowan's playing tight defense, I'm fading away from him, sealing him off with my butt. There's no way he's getting in this relationship. <laughs> so 